This is Team BDU presenting for CS106 data structures. We are presenting our content-based image retrieval program. Um, first, we're going to give you an idea of what the program does, and then we're going to walk you through how we went through a project. So uh, first, we're going to do distance retrieval. Here we have our image our main image that the user can select. And below it are all the images that have similar content. We have two different methods. One is distance, as you can see right there, and the other is intersection. Um, here's some using intersection. Uh, pretty similar images, um, but a little different formula. We'll get more into that later. Our program also returns different numbers of photos. Giving the options 25, 50, and 100. Okay, awesome. So we're going to start first with what we did, how we got the photos, and how we made the database photos. So the photo, there are many options available online for downloading photos. Um, and we chose Wang's database because it had a large variety of different kinds of photos with uh, very specific types of colors. So the next thing we did was retrieve the histograms for all of the images. And we did that using this algorithm, which essentially goes through and opens each image by iterating through 0 to 1,000. You can see that each photo is named uh, z a number, 0 through 1,000, uh, makes that into a string, that number into a string, adds JPEG, and opens the photo. It then retrieves the histogram of the photo using a built-in function that's available in the PIL library and it writes that the, each, each of those histograms to a dictionary which it records into a different folder. Uh, here is the final product. Here's the final product, and as you can see, it's just a text document that has a dictionary with all histograms. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the two functions that we use to compare um, photos and find some languages. Um, the two that we use are Euclidean distance here. Um, this is essentially the distance formula, and it will be comparing two different histograms uh, in 768 dimensions. So those 768 dimensions are the dimensions, uh, the amount of bins in each histogram. And then the other one is intersection, the one below it, right here. Um, and this is iterating over each bin for two different histograms, selecting the minimum amount for each bin and then adding them up. Now, I'm going to show you the code in a second. Okay, here we are. Um, in the beginning, this essentially, we have some uh, variables used to store size, such as right here. Um, we have to open the image here. Uh, here we find the Im uh, histogram for the query image. This is the image that we've selected. Uh, this is the variable for the histograms um, that we've already found for our database uh, that we just showed you before. Um, it, and, and it's important to retrieve all of those histograms before you run the main code because that actually takes a few minutes due to the large number of size of the, the, of the database. All right. Thank you.
Okay, so first we're going to go through um, the Euclidean distance formula. Um, the first call for it will happen actually here in distances. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to create a list that we will store the distance and the photo name in once we have found the actual distance. Um, this next line is going to iterate right here, is going to iterate over each histogram in our histogram list that we had before. And this is the important one which actually compares um, the histograms from the histogram list and our query histogram. And that calls this function right here. So what this function is doing essentially is going through each bin, iterating over each bin, and saying and finding the distance, adding it up in the total, and then taking the square root of that to find total distance. Okay, so after we find this distance here, and we return that, it's going to return it here as our variable a. What we do with a is we floor it because it is not going to be an integer at this moment. It's going to be some floated number. Um, and we want to make sure that we can, our sorting function radix sort uh, will only sort integers. So we floor it. Um, and then we're going to put it into this list that we created earlier, distance width, where we have um, this a value. Um, as the distance, which is going to be what we're going to sort it, and then the i is the photo name. And this is important because later, when we're displaying the images, the um, i will be used um, to know which image to actually open. Uh, and then here, our last line is sorting the um, sorting the distances using radix sort. Uh, we have radix sort at the bottom. It is one of the data structures that we implemented in our project. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to talk about our second formula, our intersection formula. Um, this is again taking, um, going to be taking the minimum of each bin and adding it into a total. So it's going to call this function. Again, we have an empty list. Um, we're going to go through each bin. We're going to go through each histogram. Sorry, each histogram in our list of histograms from before. Um, here is where we call the comparison between our query image histogram and the histogram uh, from our previous list. It's going to call this function here compare intersect. Um, within the histogram for the comparison image. We have the bins, so for each, this is for i for each bin uh, in the in the histogram. We're comparing the bin of the query image histogram and the bin of the comparison image histogram. So if if the comparison image histogram bin is smaller, we're going to put in the total, and if it's not smaller, we're going to put the query image histogram bin uh, into the total. And we're going to do that for all the bins, so for all 768 bins. Here, uh, to normalize it, we have the total divided by um, the number of pixels in our query image. And this is just a way to normalize in case we have um, images of different sizes. OK, and then so we come back to our intersection function here. We're going to have A, which is the number we just returned for the similarity. Um, we just multiply it by 1,000 and then floor it so we can get a good integer to, to use to compare the images. We use the same thing as before with the list, where we have the similarity here and then the photo name here. And then we sort it using radix sort. Now, since um, we actually are sorting based upon greatest similarity um, as, to, as opposed to before, which was least distance, um, we have to reverse the order of the images. Um, this 
actually making the correct code, uh, so this was difficult, um, but it ended up working. One thing that was difficult to implement about this was in order to get a reverse list, you have to actually use the reverse, uh, uh, built-in reverse function and not just turn each number of how that tells you how similar it is into a negative number, which we tried, um, because the radix sort can't sort negative numbers. Um, so yeah, really quick, we chose radix sort because it sorts in linear time, um, but so it's complicated to get that to work. But once it got it to work, um, we were happy with the results because it sorts so fast. All right, so here we go. I'm going to talk about the GUI, which is a graphical user interface. Um, let me pull up. All right, so the first thing this code is going to do here um, is going to create the ask window. Here's the object of the class ask. Um, and I'll show you what that does here. The code for it is up here. It basically creates a window. Um, it opens a window that asks you to select a file. So here we go. I'll show you what that looks like. And then here I am, and I can select any file here. Um, let's choose that one. Um, so that's the first window that pops up. And then I'll talk about the second window now. Um, so once you have the, once you select your image, then um, it runs through this code and it creates down here, creates the instance, the object of the my app here. Um, and that's what creates the second tkinter window that pops up. Um, th yeah, so this graphical user interface is created with tkinter, which is just a way to make a GUI. Um, so I'm going to start from the top of this. This is the object that uh, has this window here. I'll go through the code. Um, first, it's initialized. Basically, this window is, um, is divided into frames. So first you'll create, you'll divide into two frames, top and bottom. And then in each frame you'll organize it further. So like this is the top frame. Um, and then in the top frame, there's two more frames divided left and right. Um, so that's here above this line. Here's the top frame and then this is the left frame. This is the right frame here. Then we have these nifty little um, radio buttons um, that, um, you know, they have a, a variable associated with these. That's not the radio. All right. Um, so we have these radio buttons, and they save a, a variable um, that's associated with an option. So these two options will have one variable, and then these three options will have a different variable. Um, and then they're associated with this right frame here. Um, we have these buttons. I'll show you what these buttons do here. Let's just choose a different option. We're going to choose intersection retrieval and we're going to select this button here. And when I push that button, it calls this function. So here's the, here's the button that I just clicked. Um, it calls this function callback and the, the function here that the button calls is right here and that's basically um, running the whole thing again which I'll talk about in a second but it's, it's refreshing the canvas um, we have this other button here which is really cool I'll go ahead and show you that right now the restart button restart button right here um, which is this button and um, lets you restart the process so here we go again, we're going to have a new window pop up. I'm going to select a different image this time. And then it's going to go through the whole thing again. So that's cool, you can always select a new image if you want to. Um, moving on. Um, there's a bunch of just frame subdivisions here. So like, this is the right frame. On the left frame here, there's different, there's a frame in a frame 
for organizational purposes. Um, you can, in this part, um, this is talking about the radio buttons to ask how many you can show. Um, and it saves it as a variable here based on the radio button you select. So there are three, three buttons you can choose. You can choose whether you want to show 25, 50, or 100 photos. I'll show you what that looks like here. Say I want to show, the default is 25. Um, but say I want to show 50 photos. Here we go. The camera's in the bottom here updates and now there's more photos. Then you have the bottom frame which is basically where all the images are shown. Um, and there's this little text thing right here. But besides that, the bottom frame is mostly just a canvas. Um, and the reason it's a canvas is so that you can have this scroll bar here on the right, otherwise um, you couldn't have the scroll bar. Um, that's a nice little interactive thing. And then on the canvas, you basically I have this function here. Um, and basically what it does is it loads the first image here, then it loads the second image, then it loads the third, the fourth, the fifth, and then when it, once it gets to the fifth, it restarts the count and it goes to the second row on the first one here, and that's what these two variables are here, count x and count y, save the placement um, of where you're going, and as you're loading the images through. And you have to iterate that for all the images. Um, First, I ran into some trouble implementing this, but um, you actually need to create uh, essentially this this code right here is creating i um, variable names. So, like photo one, photo two, photo three, photo four are all going to be saved, and if you don't create those as different variable names, then each image won't be saved, and only the last image, this very last image in the bottom, will show up, and none of the other ones before it will show up. So that's why you need to save those images as you go here. So yeah, you load the images. Um, that's pretty. All right. So now that we know how everything works, we're just going to give one final interactive example here. Um, we load the code. We select an image here. Choose a random funky one. Uh, let's choose this lobster. That looks good. And then by default, it's loaded the distance retrieval. It's 25. Let's change it to the intersection. It has different images. They're all similar. They all have that red color. And then let's load some more images. Now we have some more images. Let's select a different image. Um, this one looks cool. There you go. That's our code. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.